Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I've been driving this Model X Plaid for almost a month now. I've accumulated nearly a month of Tesla safety score ratings. I'm going to break that down for you and show you how different aspects of driving that Tesla's monitoring affect your safety score. This is something that will affect whether you get FSD beta in the short run. In the long run, it's going to affect how much you pay for insurance if you use Tesla insurance. And there's some interesting details that come out of this. Are you ready? Let's go. Okay, we're going to start with this. This is from my test lap. You can see June 8th to July 4th, 2022. I've got a 97 safety score based on one point, an average of 1.1 forward collision warning, 0.7% hard braking, 3.3% aggressive turning, and 17.2% unsafe following. And zero forced autopilot disengagements. These are the five factors that Tesla considers in deciding what your safety score is going to be. We're gonna go down through these. I believe these are in order of importance. I believe the way that Tesla set them up is in order of importance, roughly in order of importance. I'm not sure whether, I think the first three are the really important ones. My analysis, I'm gonna show you this. My analysis says unsafe following is not terribly important. And I can't tell whether forced autopilot disengagements are important because I haven't had any. So I'm gonna show you my data, I'm gonna show you everything else, but I just wanted you to see this, and, and the analysis I did is through July 3rd, today is July 4th, I've driven five miles, I have 100 today, but that's not in the data, because I did the, I did the data analysis, or I put the data into my spreadsheet yesterday. Just really quick, here's some spe specific days. This is my worst day. This is the first day I was driving using i did any significant miles using fsd beta and the safety score and you can see i had forward collision warnings hard braking aggressive turning 25.8 and i had an 81 safety score now my overall safety score is a 97. so this was my worst day by far my next worst day was a 91. so this is going to help us understand the data i'm going to show you that in a minute and then this is my next worst day a 91 safety score you can see forward collision warnings again hard braking aggressive turning unsafe following again no no auto and you can see the chart up here you can see the different daily details which days are the worst so those are the two worst days here is a 100 day this is in middle of june i drove 317 miles i had a 100 safety score i had zero forward collision warnings zero hard braking zero aggressive turning 21.2 percent unsafe following that's a fairly large number and zero uh, I, I i almost shouldn't mention the forced autopilot disengagements i just don't have the data on those i don't know what it takes to get a forced autopilot disengagement i haven't had any at least it's not registering any but you can see the three big ones were zeros even though unsafe following was what i think is a fairly high number compared to the rest of my data i still had a hundred safety score here is all my data Okay, this is not in chronological order. This is from the worst day to the best day. So you can see my 100 days, both my 100 days, I had zeros for forward collision. The first column is forward collision, sec forward collision warning, second column is hard braking, third column is aggressive turning, fourth column is unsafe following. I left forced disengagements in, but you can see they're all zeros. I included the miles on the chart, and you can see the safety scores. So you can see most of the days I did 97 or better right? On 397s. In fact, most of the days I did 98 or better. So I had, apparently I'm a very good driver. If you're a woman and you're looking to date a man who's a responsible driver, apparently I'm the guy. I'm a very responsible, safe driver. Ever since I figured out what safety score was, my safety score got better. So apparently like, I think if you wanted to have children with a man, you'd want a man with a good safety score because he's going to drive your kids safely, but that's just being silly. So Notable is this one day, now you can see my highest unsafe following was a 36.8, and I still had a 98 that day. But you can see the 200 days, zeros on the first three, and I got hundreds, even though the 21.2 is relatively high for me on unsafe following. You can see I had days with zero unsafe following. You can see my worst days, I had something, looking up here at 81, 91, 92, let's say, I had some positive number, um, let's say go, going to this 95 day, on all five of those days, I had something, some positive number for forward collision, hard braking, aggressive turning, right? And the, the unsafe following numbers are not particularly high for my data. So I don't think that's that big of a deal. I just think, you know, unless some people are getting like 95s on their unsafe following or, you know, over 50, I don't know what it takes 
or unsafe following be bad enough to have a significant impact on your safety score but whatever it is you know i got 36.8 and i still had a 98 safety score and that was with a little bit of hard braking and a little bit of aggressive turning on 1149 miles it was a big day of driving but i still only had a, a 98 safety score with all of that and i believe these are a percentage of the time if you look at the if you look at the the data here it shows percent percent unsafe following percent it, the the forward collision warnings isn't percent that might be a total number but the other ones are percent so i don't think that's anything significant and you can see the the worst score was a forward collision warning of 22.2 which was the highest forward collision score i had and the hard braking was 1.9 that was the worst hard braking day i had and the aggressive turning was 11.2 i think that was the worst day i had for aggressive turning as well so you can see forward collision warnings hard braking and aggressive turning will lead to a bad safety score but you can see even the 91 my aggressive turning was dramatically lower my hard braking was a little better but my forward collision warnings was much lower and you can see here on 95 i still had a 13.4 on forward collisions but my aggressive turning was 2.2. So you can just sort of see, and then an 18 with a 92. I, I don't know how they're measuring it, but here's what I did. I took these numbers, and, and uh, sorry, you can see the 99s here. The 99s, zero forward collision warnings, low scores for hard braking, and mostly low scores for aggressive turning, and that led to 99s. So I wanted to show you this, this formula, I used a website that does a multivariate linear, linear regression analysis, and what I did was I normalized the data. I took for each for each of the charts here, I didn't, I didn't take this, but for each of the chart, you can see the maximum was 22.2, so I divided every number in the column, the first column, by 22.2. I divided every number in the second column by 1.9. I divided every number in the third column by 11.2, and every number in the fourth column by 36.8, and that gave me what I would call normalized data. I'm not sure this is the correct way to do it, just to be clear. I haven't done statistical analysis in a very long time. I Last time I did any significant statistical analysis was 1991, when I was at Stanford University's PhD program in the business school. I'm not saying this is the, a, a thorough statistical analysis, but I'll show you that the R squared, this is usually a measure of your quality of your regression, was 0.977. That's a pretty good R squared. That means that the curve fits reasonably well. And I, I checked on the raw data and I tried to normalize based on the average for each column and those had lower R squared. So this was the best fit of all the data I tried. Doesn't mean I'm right. And what you can see is the forward collision 7.7. .7. So number one, the it starts at 100.67. Ideally, the, the Y intercept would be 100 or zero, but ideally in this case, the Y intercept should be 100. So it's a little off here, but this was better than the other analyses that I tried. And you can see 7.7, .7 a negative slope of 7.7 .7 for forward collision versus a negative one for unsafe following. This means forward collision would be 7.7 .7 times more important than unsafe following. My gut is forward collision, that unsafe following is basically a zero, but apparently it's not zero when you do the curve fitting. Apparently it has some influence. It looks like from my data, forward collision is the most important, 5.3 for aggressive turns, and then 4.3 for hard braking. So it looks like aggressive turns is actually a little bit more significant than hard braking. That may just be my data. And if we looked at other people's data, you might get different results. This is what we're seeing. Anyway, these three are much more important than aggressive turns, are, are much more important than unsafe following. Unsafe following, relatively unimportant. Aggressive turns, hard braking. If you can avoid forward collision warnings, don't get too close to objects in front of you. If you can avoid, avoid hard braking. And I, by the way, I had moments where the car gave what appeared to be a forward collision warning, but it didn't register. One of the keys, I think, to minimizing your safety or maximizing your safety score is if you're driving on autopilot, navigate on autopilot, then supposedly it doesn't count. And I think some of the forward collision warnings I had were while I was on navigate on autopilot and that doesn't count against you. So that seems to be a strategy is use navigate on autopilot as much as possible. Or if you have a, if you have Tesla insurance on FSD beta, then use FSD beta as much as possible, and that will maximize your safety score. Anyway, this is the analysis that forward collision is the most important thing. Avoid forward collision warnings, um, hard braking, brake early, or, or, you know, do one pedal driving. One pedal driving is you never, you basically never touch the brake. You accelerate with the accelerator pedal. When it's time to decelerate, you look, you're, 
you learn how to take your foot off the accelerator and the car will slow down naturally. I, I know people who uh, are somewhat aggressive and driving and they get close to the light and they, they don't brake until the last minute at a traffic light or they don't brake to the last minute when there's traffic in front of them. Ease off the accelerator early, let the car coast down and, and with Teslas you get uh, regenerative braking bonus with that. That will help a lot. And then aggressive turns. This is the frustrating one for me, aggressive turns. I like driving aggressively on turns, but apparently that's a significant factor that Tesla considers. And so I have been babying the turns. And I think if we look at my data again, is that, is that my worst one? You know, my aggressive turning, you know, 11.2, I, I think I get more aggressive turning than hard braking. I think that's the one I have the most trouble with. Although you can see on my good days, those numbers are fairly low. I have very rarely, I only have a couple of zeros on aggressive turns. So apparently that's, that's like my challenge is to aggressive, to a turn aggressively less often, you know, basically take it easier on the turns. And I've been told by people that when you're accelerating out of a, like you're making a right turn or a left turn and you're accelerating through the turn, you know, coming from a stoplight, baby the acceleration coming out of the stoplight. If you're making a turn, if you're going straight ahead, I have done a number of plaid bursts. Uh, zero to 75 in like three seconds. I just did zero to 80 yesterday, showing off to friends mostly, sometimes just for fun myself. And it, hard acceleration does not have an impact. Notably, Tesla chose not to include speeding in its data. They had actuaries. Look at the data. They have all this data on how people drive. And they did not think that driving over the speed limit or driving fast or any of that was significant enough to include in their calculation. And this is what I think is interesting as a now retired traffic lawyer, they, they didn't include intoxication. I don't think they have a way of measuring intoxication. It'd be interesting to see if they could develop a way of measuring indicators of an intoxicated driver. You know, what would they look for to see? I mean, maybe hard braking and forward collision warnings and aggressive turns are an indication of an intoxicated driver. I don't know, but would the car would, would there be data that would reflect an intoxicated driver? That's an interesting question. I don't know how you would measure that. But speeding is one of the most common tickets issued by police, and they tell us it's for traffic safety. And Tesla is telling you, and by the way, when I had Progressive, they had a thing monitoring the driving. It was on hard braking. Tesla is able to measure everything, and their actuaries, the people who looked at the data, decided that speeding was not significant enough to include in their data to decide how to price your insurance or to decide whether you get FSD beta. I'm going to say this now, okay? The whole idea that we need police to write speeding tickets to keep us safe from dangerous speeders appears to be a lie. This is not surprising to me. Um, it may be surprising to you. You may be convinced that people driving fast is a huge problem. It doesn't show up in their data. Speed does not appear to cause insurance claims. Going over this, they know the speed limit. My car registers the speed limit. It registers what speed I'm going almost all the time, except on some rare occasions. They know when I'm going 30 over the limit. They know when I'm going 40 over the limit. They know when I'm going speed limit. They decided not to include speeding as a factor. I think that tells you that there's this whole scam where Palm Beach County, Florida, where I don't live anymore, but I lived for 11 years, Palm Beach County, Florida, 15,000 traffic tickets a month in their local courts. None of them for hard braking, none of them for forward collision warnings, none of them for aggressive turning, none of them for, un maybe some of them for unsafe following, but that's a ticket I don't, I didn't see very much as a traffic lawyer. I'm going to say this, so the idea that police should write speeding tickets to make the road safer is a monster scam. It is an excuse to give police something to do. It is an excuse. It's an arbitrary tax on drivers. It is a huge waste of our society's resources. And I'm going to say it now, we should stop speed enforcement. Um, speed enforcement also leads to police encounters that sometimes lead to racial uh, racial misconduct. It sometimes leads to police shootings. It leads to police planning drugs in cars. All kinds of bad things happen when police stop cars for speeding. You know, good things happen too on occasion, but by and large, these are not pleasant encounters. People don't like getting pulled over. For those who don't know, I got a speeding ticket on my trip out to California, 83 and a 70. Like, I didn't even think they would write 83 and a 70, but some cop in Louisiana wrote me for 83 and a 70. I feel almost ashamed that I was driving a plaid and I was only going 13 over the limit when I got my ticket. I just wanted to, to make this clear. I, I think this might be helpful if you are driving uh, and you're trying to get a better safety score. Um, I'm not sure how you're getting forward collision warnings. You want to try to avoid that. The basic biggest thing you want to do is drive less aggressively. 
you know don't follow people closely don't go I haven't noticed my speed making a difference in this at all. I, honestly, some of the times I'm like weaving and bobbing through traffic and it doesn't seem like doesn't se like if I see an opening, there's a car ahead of me that's going slow, but a car to the right is going a little bit slower and I've been waiting for, you know, something to open up so I can get past these guys. I'll like accelerate and cut through and that doesn't seem to have a significant effect on my safety score. I got a 97 and I do that fairly often. So that apparently isn't as dangerous as people think it is. It's not something that's likely to cause accidents and Tesla's not dinging me for it. So anyway, that's my experience with the Tesla safety score. I'm curious if you have your own data, if you can enter your data in a spreadsheet uh, and send it to me and you want me to take a look at it, you want me to do the same kind of regression analysis, I'd be happy to do that. We could do another video if a few people send me their safety, especially if you have a bigger range, since most of my range is between like 95 and, and, a, and 100. Like if somebody has a range of safety scores from 100 to 80 or 100 to 70 or something like that, that would probably be a better data set to evaluate what the influence is, the different things that they're scoring. So that's it. Please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Please support me on the Locals platform, warrenredlick.locals.com, on Patreon. Links to all this in the description below. As a YouTube channel member, please check out my other videos. And thank you so much for watching.